In January 2017, French ESA astronaut Thomas Pesquet started the year with a successful spacewalk, the first of two extravehicular activities during his long-duration mission aboard the International Space Station ISS. The 10th French astronaut performed a hundred scientific experiments during his 196 days stay in space and shared many of these with the public. In June, Pesquet returned safely to Earth. The following month, Italian ESA astronaut Paolo Nespoli returned to the ISS for his third mission in space. Like Toma, he performed many scientific experiments in several fields such as biology, human physiology and technology demonstrations. He returned on the 14th of December. ESA is at present reliant on the Russian Soyuz capsules to send its astronauts into space. But new possibilities in human spaceflight are being explored. For instance, with Orion, NASA's future manned spacecraft. For this capsule, ESA is developing a key element, the service module, which was presented in Bremen in February. Soon, ESA astronauts might also fly aboard a Chinese capsule. In August, ESA astronauts Samantha Cristoforetti and Matthias Mora already shared a survival training with their Chinese Taikonaut colleagues. January 2017 also saw the first launch of a Small Geo satellite. Small Geo is a new telecommunications platform for a wide range of payloads and missions. This first flight was based on a public-private partnership between ESA, industry partner OHB and an operator, Hispasat. Small Geo offers a framework to develop cutting-edge technologies, while also answering to telecom market demands. With each passing year, the Galileo program moves forward. Galileo initial services have been operational for a year, and independent measurements show that the European Civilian Satellite Navigation System is now the best in the world. In December, an Ariane 5 launched four more Galileo satellites to further expand the constellation. Today, it's comprised of 22 satellites and should be completed in 2018. For Earth Observation and Europe's Copernicus program, two more Sentinel satellites were launched in 2017. In March, Sentinel 2B was sent aboard a Vega from Kourou. Paired up with its twin brother, Sentinel-2A, the satellites are monitoring land cover, vegetation and water pollution from space. In October, Sentinel-5P was launched on a rocot from Plesetsk. It's now monitoring air pollution in our atmosphere, providing information about trace gases such as methane, carbon monoxide, aerosols and ozone. These gases affect the air we breathe and are part of the ozone layer which shields our planet. The Copernicus data is freely available to the scientific community and can be used for a large portfolio of applications. 2017 was an important year as well for ESA's scientific missions, as it saw the end of LISA Pathfinder. This mission demonstrated the technology needed to detect gravitational waves. This offers a fresh perspective on astronomy, with a new way of looking at our universe. Another science mission that came to an end was Cassini-Huygens, an ESA-NASA mission launched in 1997. Cassini explored Saturn and its moons for 13 years, collecting an impressive set of scientific data with fantastic images of Saturn and its surroundings. With Huygens, ESA made the first landing of a probe on Titan, one of Saturn's moons. In September, Cassini made its grand finale, diving through Saturn's rings to be vaporized in the planet's atmosphere. 2017 also marked the 60th anniversary of the Sputnik launch. This Soviet spacecraft was the first satellite in orbit and signified the start of the space age, a venture which is far from over. For ESA, the future is being prepared in Kourou. The launch pad for ESA's new Ariane 6 launcher is well advanced. Meanwhile, tests are ongoing in Europe, with a launch targeted for July 2020. Another leap to come for ESA.